Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to have an overview of the cache design. That means we are going to learn the things that takes place inside the cache step by step. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now the cache is designed keeping these four things in mind. First thing first is block placement, which is where to place the main memory block inside the cache. That means it helps us find out the way how to place a main memory block inside the cache. Coming to the next one is block identification, which help us resolve the question how to find out the main memory block inside the cache. That means we find out whether the main memory block is present inside the cache or not. Now next up is block replacement. That means during a cache maze, how to choose which entry to replace from the cache. That means first we choose a main memory block inside the cache and then replace that with the newly requested block. Now the last but not the least is write strategy, which answers how are the updations propagated. That means whenever we make some updations to the cache block, how that is propagated to the main memory. Now so far we have acquired some knowledge regarding block placement and block identification during the study of different cache memory mapping techniques. In today's discussion, we will first brush up these concepts and thereafter we will talk about block replacement and the right strategies. Now let's begin with block placement. In direct mapping, the block placement takes place having the particular main memory block number and the number of lines inside the cache and performing a modulus operation. That means if we are to find out where the content of the main memory block number 15 is going to be placed inside the cache, all we need is to perform 15 mod 4 that is the number of lines inside the cache which will give us the line number 3. Therefore, the contents of the main memory block number 15, that is word number 60, 61, 62 and 63 will be placed inside the line number 3. Now in case of set associative mapping, the block placement takes place taking the particular main memory block number and the number of sets inside the cache and performing a modulus operation, which gives us the set number where that particular main memory block will be mapped onto. For an instance, if we are to find out where the contents of the main memory block number 6 will be placed inside this two-way set associative cache with two different sets, all we need to do is perform 6 mod 2 because that is the number of sets inside the cache which will give us the set number that is 0 where the contents of the main memory block number 6 can be mapped onto. Now if the set number 0 is empty previously, in that case, for the main memory block number 6, we have two different mapping options, that is the line number 0 and the line number 1. Now in associative mapping or fully associative mapping, suppose the cache is empty. Now in this scenario, if we are to find out where the contents of the main memory block number 3 will be placed inside the cache, in that case we don't really have any restrictions. It can be placed onto any of the cache lines. Therefore, in associative mapping, we can place a main memory block anywhere inside the cache. And that's how block placement is done in terms of associative mapping. Now, let's talk about block identification. Here, we actually try to identify whether the main memory block is present or not inside the cache. Coming to direct mapping, we know the physical address in that case is divided into tag fields, line index, and block or line offset. Now at first, using the line index and the block or line offset, we try to find out the potential match inside the cache. Now once that is found out, we take the tags associated with that line and compare them with the tags provided inside the physical address. And that's how block identification is done in case of direct mapping. Now in set associative mapping, we know the physical address is split as tag field, set index and block or line offset. So first, we try to find out the particular set using the set number and once that is found out, we take the tag bit provided inside the physical address and compare that with all the tags associated with all the lines belonging to that particular set parallelly. And that's how block identification is done in terms of set associative mapping. Now in associative mapping, we know the physical address is split as tag bits and block or line offset. So for block identification, we take the tag bits provided inside the physical address and compare that with all the tags associated to every line inside the cache, that too, simultaneously. And that's how block identification is done 
in terms of associative mapping. Now this much we have already known while studying about different mapping techniques. So let's talk about the next phase that is block replacement. Now the cache is limited in size. That means we don't have the luxury of size when it comes to cache. So during block replacement, the question we should be asking is, what should be done A, when the cache is full, which is also known as capacity miss. That means we are asking for a new block, however, the cache is full at that point. That kind of miss is known as capacity miss. Now the second question is, what should be done when the potential match can't be found inside the cache? Now it can happen in two scenarios. The first one is called compulsory miss. That means the main memory block that we are looking for inside the cache has not been accessed yet. Therefore, we can't really do anything about it. So it's a compulsory miss. And the second one is conflict miss. That means the main memory block inside the cache where it should be has already been occupied by some other main memory block. Now for these two cases, we can do block replacement. That means replace a block residing the cache with the newly requested block and move the replaced block into the next level of the memory hierarchy. Suppose when a new block has been requested by the processor, it happens to be a miss inside the nth level. In that case, we need to replace a block inside nth level and place that block into n plus 1th level and make space for the newly requested block which should be brought into the nth level from the n plus 1th level. Let's have a more realistic illustration. Suppose the processor is asking for a new block and it's a miss inside the cache. Now it can happen either in case of capacity miss, that is the cache is already full or it can happen in case of conflict miss, that means the block where it's supposed to be inside the cache has been occupied by some other block. Now in any of these cases, when cache block from the cache will be selected and will be moved to the next level of the memory hierarchy, that is the main memory, making space for the newly requested block, which then will be brought from the next level of the memory to the cache. And that's how block replacement takes place. Now for block replacement, there is a question that should be answered, which is which block to replace? That means which cache block will be selected for eviction so that it can make space for the newly requested block. Now in order to answer this question, we have different cache replacement policies. The first one is random replacement where we replace any of the cache block at random. Next up is first in first out. That means the cache blocks are evicted in their arrival order. That means whichever block came into the cache first will be selected for eviction. Also, we have the last in first out, where the block which got placed inside the cache for the last time will be evicted first. Also, we have the recency based policies where we keep track of the access orders of the blocks. Next up, we have the frequency based policies. In these, we keep track of the number of times a block has been referred to. And finally, we have the optimal replacement policy, which is also known as Belladi's optimal algorithm. Now we will discuss about all these cache replacement policies in detail in our upcoming sessions. For now, let's talk about the next phase that is the right strategy. So at first, the question should be asked when it is needed. And the answer to that is whenever the processor needs to modify a data word. And there are two situations where the right strategy is needed. The first one is called right hit. That means the data word which is to be modified is already present inside the cache. In such kind of situation, we have two different strategies. The first one is called write through. That means both the cache and the main memory are updated simultaneously. Let's understand this with the help of an illustration. Suppose this is the organization and these are the words inside the main memory. Now, since it's a write hit situation, suppose the contents of the main memory block number one are already present inside the cache. Suppose the processor needs to modify this particular data word. Now, according to the write through strategy, when the modification will be made, it will be propagated to the main memory as well, updating the main memory block. Now, this strategy is used during lesser write operations. Now, why is so? because cache is embedded into the processors themselves. Therefore, accessing the cache requires way less time than accessing the main memory. 
Now, since in case of write through, both the cache and the main memory are updated simultaneously, therefore, whenever there is a need for write, as the modification should be propagated to the next level as well, therefore, for each write operation, the time required will be longer. So, this is the entire concept of write through strategy. Now, write through strategy comes with its own pros and cons. Talking about the advantages, it's actually reliable and helps in data recovery. That means if the cache fails at a certain point of time, since the updations are propagated to the main memory simultaneously, we won't lose any data. However, the data writes are delayed because for every updation, we actually need to access both the cache and the main memory. Now, the next write strategy under write hit situation is known as write back or write deferred. Now, why is so? Because only the cache is updated in real time. So, if the processor wants to update this particular data word inside the cache, it will update it. And the updation will be reflected using a bit called dirty bit. And when the updation is made, the dirty bit will be set to 1. Now, the information regarding the dirty bit will be kept inside the tag directory for each tag directory entry along with its tag information. And the updation will be propagated to the main memory whenever the replacement takes place. That means, Whenever the processor asks for a new block, which will be placed inside the cache in the same line, the contents of the line will be evicted from the cache. And if for that particular line, the dirty bit is set to 1, the updation will be propagated to the main memory. And afterwards, the newly requested block will be placed inside the cache. And that's the entire concept of write back or write deferred. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of this strategy as well. Coming to the advantage, it is way faster. Why? Because the updation is propagated to the main memory only when replacement takes place. So apart from replacement, we are not going to access the main memory very often. However, this makes the data recovery impossible. That means at any certain point of time, if the cache fails, we won't be able to recover the updated data. Therefore, for write hit, there are two different write strategies. One is write through and another one is write back. Now let's talk about the second situation which is called write miss. That means the data the processor needs to modify is actually absent from the cache. Now for this situation as well there are two different strategies. The first one is called write allocate. That means since the data is absent from the cache the data is brought into the cache first. Now, suppose the processor needs to modify this particular data word of the main memory block number 1. Now, as the name suggests, we have to allocate the main memory block inside the cache first and afterwards the updation will be made. Now, write allocate can work equally with write through. That means whenever the updation is made, it will be propagated to the main memory at the same time as well as write back. That means the updation will be propagated when only the cache block is replaced. However, since write through suffers from delayed data writes, that's why write allocate is mostly used with write back. So, this is the underlying concept of write allocate. Now, coming to the next strategy that is no write allocate, where the data is updated directly inside the main memory, which essentially means we don't really bother the cache regarding the allocation. Suppose the processor needs to modify this particular data word of block number 1. In that case, the processor will update that particular data word of that particular block inside the main memory itself. And this is the concept of no write allocate. Isn't it pretty simple? So in write mess, we also have two different write strategy. The first one is write allocate, where we first bring the data to be modified inside the cache. And afterward, we can perform either write through or write back. However, write back is mostly used. And the second strategy is no write allocate, where we directly update the data inside the main memory. All right, everyone, that will be all for this session. In today's session, we learned about various phases, keeping which in mind the cache is designed. In the upcoming sessions, we will learn about different cache replacement policies in details. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.